some of the challenges in my work is uh, really the the idea of working with one is just working with people. So people are these really wonderful, uh, predictably weird creatures, uh, and and so every single time you work with a person, each person's a little bit different, but you start seeing that there are patterns in their differences and patterns in their behavior, and then you try and model those things and, uh, and get the robot to understand and, and use that to, to produce robot behavior. Uh, one of the things I think that distinguishes uh, my work and, and the way I approach the problem is that when I'm looking at the behavior of a person, I'm not just trying to model what they're doing. I'm trying to model how they're, or, or why they're doing it. Is maybe a better way of thinking about it. It's, it's instead of modeling the behavior, it's modeling the processes that govern the behavior. And this is not something that we have direct access to. I can't just like take a quick measurement and say, oh, well, that's why humans are doing this. Uh, it, it's it's a very noisy, hidden signal that you have to extract after watching many, many people do many, many things. Uh, and you have to change weird parameters in the world that you didn't think were important. But it turns out they're very important. We'll stand closer if I add noise to the room. That's weird, but it kind of makes sense once you start to think about it. So, uh, yeah, just trying to really understand why people act the way they do, why they do head nods when we're talking to them, why we avert our gaze, why we position ourselves the way that we do. Why are my hands moving while I'm talking? Um, these are just really weird things that we take for granted, but things that uh, uh, are really interesting and, and could be incorporated to make robots be more expressive and more personal.